what is going on guys welcome to my 60th job tutorial and in the last tutorial we went ahead and we built a new array and in essence we built a whole new class to uh, create this array to hold dog objects but then at the end of the tutorial got a little knock on our door and our boss was like alright you know how you created that for dogs well actually I need you to create one for fish as well and you know that's nice and all so what can we do what are our options we can go ahead and create a new fish list and do this all again or you know then we're gonna have if he comes back again and tells us to do it with dolphins or cats we're gonna have to keep doing that again and again and again so instead of just having to create class after class after class I wish there was a way where we can only create one class and it could hold fish objects and dog objects and any kind of animal that we want so then when our boss says alright I need you to actually create one to hold um, birds we're gonna be like oh you know what already done because we already built a sufficient and effective program to hold all classes of animals even the ones that we didn't even know um, that were created yet so how would we do that well this dog list is nice but let's go ahead and delete that right now delete and okay so instead of just creating a bunch of different classes to hold objects let's go ahead and make one final thing and we're going to name it animal list so let's go ahead and we can delete everything out of our main apples or whatever your main our, uh, method is and now let me get rid of that error and now let's go ahead and create a new class by right clicking source new class and we'll go ahead and name this animal list and this is going to be um, pretty much, let me run this, this little X is annoying me, there we go. And this is pretty much going to be um, the class that has our array to hold any type of animal, whether it be dog, fish, if you decide to create a dolphin class later, if you decide to create a hermit class later, it's going to already um, be able to hold that. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create an array to hold type animals. And remember, these dog, fish, since they ins extend animals, all of these are type animals already. So let's go ahead and put private um, animal. I didn't, yep, animal. And we'll just name it the list equals new animal 5. So what this pretty much means is we created array, an array named the list and they can hold five objects of type animal right there so after this let's just go ahead and make our counting variable private i equals zero and now we can go ahead and build i always do that int i equals zero and now we can go ahead and build our method and that's public void void we'll name it add still but we have to spell void right add and we'll put animal a so now it takes one parameter, which is an animal object. And now we'll just do that test again. If, um, what do we name it? The list, or actually we want to do, if i is less than the length, if i is less than the list dot length. So it would be um, five in this case, but just in case you change this, then you won't have to change it each time. So that's why I'm doing that. So if i is less than the list, length what do we want to do let's go ahead and do exact same thing we did last time the list the index for that which would be i so at first one it would assign the list zero set it equal to a which is the animal object next let's just give us a little prompt on the screen like system out print line and we'll just have animal added at index space plus i so this pretty much just gives you a little message on the screen and the last thing we want to do is increment i because if we don't it's just going to keep adding to that same index over and over again so each time this runs it's going to change that counter variable that allows us to move to the next element in our array so now that we got this animal list it's going to take any animal object we have and let's go ahead and I'll show you guys that right now. So in your main class, uh, whatever you named it, I named mine apples, still don't know why. We can go ahead and create an animal list object from this animal list we just created. 
So let's go ahead and put animal list ALO. You can name it whatever you want. New animal list bam. Just like that. Now let's go go ahead and create a new dog object because remember that method takes a um an animal object as its parameter. So go ahead and actually you know what I'll do? I'll create a new dog dog object and a new fish object. So dog we'll just name it D because it's short and sweet equals new dog just like that. Then I'll put fish from our fish class, create an object from here. F equals new fish like that. Now we can go ahead and call the add method in our ALO dot add. First of all we'll add that dog and now we'll do ALO dot add and now we'll add that fish object. So now if we go ahead and run this you can see all right animal added at index one this is the dog object and animal added or excuse me animal added at index zero this is the dog object and animal added at index one that's the fish object right there. So again what we did real quick overview we created an object so we can use the methods from this animal list class we created two objects of dog and fish which were both animal type and we go ahead and we just called the add method so it first added that dog element to index 0 and add the fish element to index 1 and we can call that five times and then that's it then our array is full if we call it after that then it's just gonna it's gonna run the program but it's not gonna add it to our array because it's already full so this is a much smarter array than we built last time because now if someone wants to create a new class that was like hermit crab like I said before all they need to do is put extends animal and it's automatically an animal type so that way we don't have to create a new array for dog fish hermit crab dolphin um, gopher woodchuck beavers we just needed to create this one class right here and it took care of all those problems so if you think this array is pretty smart just wait to the next tutorial we're gonna build this computer program even smarter and better than this and if you didn't think that is possible then trust me just wait till my next tutorial and one other thing and I know you've heard me before if you watched my last tutorial my 500th video is going to be amazing and it's gonna benefit no one but you guys so um a couple of you people might already know what that means what I'm hinting at but trust me it's gonna be the best video for you guys ever so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next tutorial